fuck is this? A great question, Jim. This is a widget that uh, will control an H bridge. Actually, two H bridges. Um, is it two? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we have this uh, this application whereby we have a railway station clock. It is from Germany, so it's a uh, Bahnhof Suhr. And um, looks pretty cool. And uh, some people got hold of some of those. And uh, yeah, basically, we need a driver for those. And uh, even more basically, I made it. So I'll briefly talk about um, what happens, how it works. I can't show you the code because this is uh, for a client and he is paying for it. So, I mean, yeah, it's his. We'll see. Maybe later on uh, we'll open source it. It's no big deal. Just a lot of uh, a lot of simple shit that's supposed to work together. So it was quite uh, quite cumbersome, especially using this shield. So the client wanted to use this exact Arduino Uno LCD shield because it includes the display, some buttons for the UI, and uh, very readily available. So if anything goes to shit. Like with the pandemic and crap, you will still find these very abundantly. Um, so we have any other general thoughts? Uh, yeah, this would basically be right at the moment. It's active high. Uh, we can change that to active low in case we use NNP channel MOSFETs. But um, basically, if this light is on, we're pulling the A phase to the voltage rail, which I think is 24 volts. If this is on, we're pulling A to ground, and if both are on, we're shorting the supply. And if both are off, uh, undefined. But they will have some pull-ups and pull-downs and whatever. Some biasing resistors uh, for that not to happen. Uh, I'll show you the delays later on in the function. Um, what else? Yeah, so basically this clock has only a minute I'll put it up again, only a minute and, a, and an hour's hand, and you can only move the minute's hand with, and it has two wires, right? So it basically you pull, um, feed it plus and minus, takes the coil one side, minus and plus pushes the plunger the other side, and it basically just clicks once every time you move the polarity. So what we wanted to do is basically pull stuff, pull the drive the phases plus minus minus plus plus minus minus plus once every minute and uh, repeatedly when we want to set up the clock at the beginning the time base will be acquired from this rtc module this is an ds30 what is it god damn it so it's a ds3231 and apparently a lot of people recommend highly recommend this chip in favor of the DS1 something. So this is a tiny bit more expensive, but uh, it does have a temperature compensated oscillator, so it should keep the time a lot better. Uh, some other guy did a calculation and it's like a bunch of micro amps this uses. So basically I think holding your hand here will, will possibly uh, pull more current from the battery than the actual chip itself. It uh, should, should last eight years if the battery doesn't self-discharge, which uh, lithium primary doesn't really. So anyhow, enough of that. So we'll, we're getting our time from here. This also has an EEPROM, uh, which I'm not using. The Arduino also has some uh, EEPROM inside of it, 1K. I think this is a bit larger. I don't know what chip this is. Uh, but these do come with, uh, with one of these uh, EEPROM chips. Uh, two features have not been implemented uh, due to budget and time constraints, and that is a backlight. So basically sensing dusk and turning on the, uh, the backlight of the clock. And uh, power loss. So this will never lose power technically because it has the lithium primary. But this might, right? This entire 24 volt setup might. And in that case, I do actually have a few videos. I'll link them up here. Uh, there is a way to actually detect power loss with one of these. 
And at power loss, you do have a bunch of milliseconds, maybe even 100, 150, 200, based on your capacitor. And that is ample time to actually save stuff. So what you could do, and what I haven't done, is at power loss, you can basically record the time of power, uh, de detect, the pow uh, detect the time of the outage. And then when the power comes back on, I do have a routine that can actually move the clock an arbitrary number of minutes. It could have been nice, but, but coulda, shoulda, woulda, I haven't done it. All right, so to work with this, I've also built a condom because I think I busted the ports on my MacBook and it's one of those old ones with the USB ports. So they're very hard to come by now. And uh, so basically what I've done is added a polarity diode. So in case I'm powering this externally, I don't want to feed current back into the Mac. And also a however many ohms this is, uh, basically maximum current of about 500 to 600 milliamps. So even if you short the output completely, it will never draw more than that. Um, yeah, so basically, let's uh, do a quick... Actually, we don't need the condom now. Uh, let's power it on and have a quick play. Oh, and on the back, this is very simple. These are all tied to ground with a bunch of resistors. And, uh, yeah, nothing super fancy. All right, so basically, to give some uh, veridicity to this, we'll um, have a look at this uh, this dude's um online clock so as you can see it's uh pretty close and this is right the error is due to me actually pressing the button at a bit of an offset so yeah i mean we would expect it to actually keep time otherwise what the hell is this but uh yeah so it should come back online all right and it has so what we can do and what i'm not gonna do is um basically change the time. You saw it actually drive the uh, H-bridge. So you can change the time. Basically, the moment you start uh, changing this value, uh, the, t the, up the updates freeze. So you can uh, change these in piece. All right, there was a little bug here whereby if you went down, it went to 63 and it only worked after 59, it would come on zero. It was pretty cute. Anyway, it works now, and you would just go on to enter, hit select, and then be done. Uh, we'll just uh, go to the next page. And um, so it's still frozen. Let's actually reset it. Um, what has consumed an insane amount of time with this display is the utter inability, or at least my complete inability, to find a way... To actually select stuff right you can see that we're selecting something so let's go into the other mode because i don't want to bust the real-time clock because it's set super nicely uh so basically we want to indicate that we're selecting the minutes or the seconds right you could have it written here but very little space on here the only way i could find is to actually have the cursor move under whatever selection is uh, is being made and this is a pain in the ass because on the one hand right and i actually had to rewrite the first 500 lines of code completely completely uh the problem is you are writing the display right you're writing mode semicolon uh, or colon set shown right you print this to the display the cursor will be right here so above the a you can have the cursor be shown or hidden. And usually it is hidden, okay? But then if you want to underline this, you have to move the cursor and show it. And the next time you write something, it, the, the cursor will be stolen from here. So you have to have basically two actors, let's call them, two functions. One will write stuff and one will move. So hide the cursor, write stuff, put the cursor back, and then the other one, which is a lot slower, will actually show the cursor and move it under whatever is being selected. You saw, um, uh, for example, enter is a larger button and uh, it goes under all of them. 
So this was a pain in the ass. Basically what this has is a little scheduler that has slow tasks, which this one is, right? So slow tasks would be the cursor mover, which goes every half a second, and also the H-bridge driver, which also goes every, fires every half a second. Uh, fast tasks, which are basically unlocked. So the Arduino has the loop thing, and it'll be called as often as possible. And the button reader is there, for example. It has some debounce inside of it, and the library has some debounce. It's a pain in the ass to use this. Like, I really hate it. I suppose it saves a lot of effort in building everything up, but uh, it was very traumatizing. Overall, I think, I think I'd still go for it because you can really buy them and they're already, everything's there, right? But uh, pain in the ass, pain in the ass, totally. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I have to say about, oh, and there's a third class of tasks, which are on demand. And, uh, those are, for example, the screen updates, uh, the writing updates. So if anything new is to be shown, there's a little flag called uh, screen update request that is set to one. And when that is high, uh the the on-demand tasks will fire and those are basically the ones that uh chew up the button presses so th the entire ui i've split into two parts one of them basic eh, let's call it three parts so one of them is the button reader which all it does is read the buttons and put them in a queue so every button has its own queue um queue is basically Right, just uh, just a way of saying it's basically we have a variable for each button, and if you press it twice, the button reader reader will add to to that button's variable. Then you come to the UI. Uh, let me let me check how these are called because I've uh, I did forget. Yeah, fuck it. I could probably show you guys this. So let's go uh, go over to the computer. And uh, yeah, so as I said, there is a function called the button reader. And all that does is basically put add values uh, to this queue, to, uh, to each member of this queue, right? So if the left button is pressed, this will have one in it, meaning that uh, this will pass, right? This if will pass. Uh, what we're, we have this big ass structure called UI page which will contain uh, targets. So the targets in this case are, uh, going back to the clock, are the numbers, right? So this would be a target, This would the hours would be a target, the minutes, the seconds, and the enter button. And left and right will simply cycle through them. Each UI page, in this case, uh, right, we also have, um, So each page has selectable items and a number of selectable items. And it'll simply go through them. So this is basically what does the selection of the items with the left and right. And then with the select, uh, it was a bit complicated. So select has regular clicks. So for example, if we go long press, and uh, let's uh, quickly change the minutes here. So let's say our actual physical clock is a few minutes behind and we hit we hit calibrate so a short god damn it so short select press it will um you will fire the calibration sequence so we'll move align the clock uh but yeah select also has long presses for changing the pages so this was also a pain in the ass to get going but anyway, so if uh, if we're if we're long pressing the select is what this means, it'll just uh, change the current page. Okay. So the UI arbiter basically uh, chews up the button presses and uh, signals what action is to be done. Okay. Um, and every time we um, every time we ch we we basically process a button press, we decrease the queue. 
right? So just in case two presses get uh, sent and something has delayed uh, the main loop, uh, this will chew them one at a time. Uh, the long press select will simply just hit it to zero because we'll, we'll never just send like two page swaps at a time. That'll never happen. Um, up and down does different things, do different things based on the page. So in this case, we have the set RTC and set show pages, which are common. And if we're on the hours, so if the highlight target is hours, so for example, where it is now, um, if the button press is up, we'll simply increase the hours figure. Uh, this time mover function also wants to know which page we're on. So either we're on set RTC or set shown because it will change different time variables. And it'll simply chew the, chew the button press. Same with minutes, same with seconds. Um, and basically this is where all the magic happens. If we press the calibrate button, uh, the cal or enter button, right? Because these pages are very similar. Uh, this button will always be on the, what is it? Third position. So zero, one, two, three. So anyway, we could just call it the cal enter button. And again, we discriminate based on the page. So if we're on set RTC, we're gonna send the time over to the RTC. Uh, the library I'm using is the Adafruit one. And uh, basically it likes this date time format, which uh, this class and the constructor for this looks, looks like this. So year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds. And so we send this over to the, um, to the RTC module, uh, display a little splash screen, cause that's always nice and uh, reset some, uh, some variables. Same with the um, aligning the clock. Here we display the splash screen first and then actually do the alignment and then reset the, the variables. Uh, the one page that I haven't shown, let's quickly go back to the clock, is this. So the minus one actually is not implemented. I'm sorry. Uh, could just, uh, I could just put a delay of one minute here, to be honest, but that's really inelegant. I don't know, I've, anyway. So here, if you press up and down or select, it does the same thing. It basically advances the clock manually one, one click or 10 clicks or even 60 clicks. All right. And basically, uh, these will be, uh, or they won't anyway. So 60, 60 minutes will be ticking over here. And this is how this is done. So not a lot, uh, not a lot going on here. And then we get, go back, uh, go forward to the UI page drawer. And so this chews the buttons and does the logic and this does all the writing, right? So this uses everything that has been done until now and draws the according page. Uh, so we turn off the highlighter. Uh, we decide whether we want to do a partial update. This isn't really necessary. At the beginning, I had some bugs and uh, this helped, but uh, I, I think we can forego this completely now. But anyway, while I do it, I think it still is elegant to not draw half the page. And basically what this does, let's go over to the uh, set shown page because that's the least dangerous. I really don't want to decalibrate this. Uh, so set shown, right? So it uh, writes the time on the screen. Uh, it uses the clock time. And this uses the absolute time. So we have copies of what the RTC time is. And this is usually in sync, but when we start changing it here, this starts deviating and we use it to calculate a difference between the clock and the absolute va value to know how many minutes we have to move forward. All right. Um, yeah, so... Basically here, this would be zero, this would be one, this would be two, and this would be three. This is what these defines stand for in the back. So, uh, yeah, basically here, we set up the UI page, right? So UI page is a global variable, which is changed based on the current page variable. 
a desired page, sorry. Uh, actually, I think it's current page, which is being fed here. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is how I thought about it. I don't know how UIs are done, actually. So if anyone has experience in this and has done it differently, I'd love to hear because this is how I figured I'd do it. I don't know if it's good or bad or if there's a more elegant way of doing it. But anyway, um, yeah, so we basically, we basically populate the elements, right? So ours is of size two. So the selector will go between two. I mean, we could have a little, uh, little complication here, not have it go on the left side if there's no number there, but yeah, fuck it. Minutes, seconds, same shit. Uh, also the location with a little helper function. If we do a partial update, that is it. We need to stop here. Otherwise, we can draw the static buttons. And this is being done here. Only at the beginning. Uh, UI calibrate. And uh, this would basically restore the cursor. Although these returns would really stop it from doing that, would it? Yeah. So this works now, but I think it would be a lot wiser. First of all, it's very taboo to use returns in your functions. It's, it's not really nice, but it's a really quick way of, of getting shit done with very little code. So anyway, this might have caused a problem. It has not. Uh, this cursor on is being take, taken care of anyway. And this set cursor is taken care of anyway as well. So these are pretty redundant. So that's why it doesn't matter that they're skipped basically most of the times. But so anyway, yeah, this is how the, uh, let's go back to the clock. And yeah, what else is there to say? So that is the back end of the um, UI. Oh, and uh, what else can I show you guys? Uh, for the H bridge, right, I was pretty panicked about never having cases in which both of these are on uh, I also took into consideration the magnetic field that will build up in this coil so this is a pretty big ass coil 24 volts I don't know how many watts it, it takes but uh, it's a big ass coil and uh, what I wanted to is uh, also give it a bit of time to de-energize before putting the other polarity on so if you can see, these don't immediately switch sides, right? And they also have a bit of a downtime. So this turns off, waits a bit, and then this turns on. And same when it goes the other way around. So I'll try to put this into slow, show this in slow motion. And uh, it'll be pretty visible. So let's, let's give it 10. All right, and one more thing that I've done um, is basically jam this low uh, just to not have any voltages go up to the clock. So this will probably be in a separate box and the clock will be out there in the rain, whatever. So if you, humidity is to ever get in there, uh, since the both of the lines will be at ground, mm, corrosion should be minimized, right? So this will click for half a second it's even less like 400 milliseconds every once in a while so i should be okay uh electrolysis wise so yeah that's been it i think i'm uh, not sure what else can i say um it's been a fun project i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and otherwise have a good one